Good afternoon. Welcome to another segment of uh, Deadline. I'm here today with a gentleman that's pretty prominent, most in the century for the youth of today, and I'm going to introduce him to you. His name is Bruce Davis. He is the administrator and warden of Trenton State Prison. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple of things today that is essential in the aspect of coming through the concrete jungles of urban America. Not specifically New Jersey, but we're going to speak of the country when it comes to the aspect of getting involved with the penal system for misdemeanors and making the wrong choices and where you will end up. How are you doing today, Mr. Davis? Good, and yourself, how are you, Mr. Hill? Uh, this is a, a subject that is very dear to my heart in the aspect that youth and adolescents are homeless, some uneducated, a vast majority not disciplined, and most importantly, they don't feel anyone cares. Can you come from a different perspective and speak of how the penal system is trying to make avenues from just being a uh, human warehouse or where they still get trades and from the barber to mason to psychological help, uh, mental health, uh, just run it down to me. You, you've been in this system quite a bit of time and you see it on a daily consistency that some of these young men are I'm not going to say they've lost they're not losers they've lost the first fight but they can be victorious with the proper guidance and support well i think um you're absolutely right about the uh, penal penal system However, the first thing that uh, the general public has to be aware of is the quality of law enforcement and the system that if it, people were taught, for example, in schools, take some of the students to the courthouse, take some of the students to see what happens in a court so that they're not afraid, they're not fearful. It's just a procedural place where crimes and misdemeanors and understanding the system. You shouldn't be scared of the system if you're exposed to it. And if you're exposed to it, then you begin to understand that it's knowledge. It's people who are currently lawyers coming back into the community and explaining what a bail's bondsman is, what is a misdemeanor, the different type of felonies, and the glorification on the media about people in a certain lifestyle without the consequences that come with that. If you look at the media now, look at the programs, Power, Empire, where's the program about the school teachers, the coaches, the people who helped you and I when we were coming up, where we had elders who were interested in making sure that you didn't fall in those traps and who allowed us, your brother, Richie, being a person that if you needed some knowledge would speak to you. So without that it takes a village to raise a child mentality. We've gone away from that, from what I can see, where you could get knowledge. People would tell you the right from wrong. Right now, there doesn't seem to be that same earnestness, that same system of elders who would speak to you if you were headed in the wrong path. And I believe that with this glorification, of that lifestyle. And you and I both have been in environments where people had no one 
who spoke to them before they got into that situation. And it's instructive. We had people who would help us. How does that translate into uh, programs and things that can enhance so that you don't have to go to college. You can get a skill or trade. And there's trades that are available, masonry, carpentry, electric. Not everybody's gonna go to college. So if you have those trades and you have the mechanism in place, then people will make money the right way and not have to resort back to the streets for a source of income. You know, I hear you. I've heard a lot of things now that I've gotten older. And what other options are there is the question because the young people of today, just like when we were younger, have to have something appetizing and interesting. Mm -hmm. As you spoke of the Oz's, the powers, that's glorified, but by the same aspect, the scared straits of our time, they're not fearful of anything. So when you began to speak of, you said they should not be afraid of the system. Okay. I differ because you don't go to court with your pants down. You don't go to court in sweatsuits. You also do not address the person that's getting ready to orchestrate your life with I don't care or speak out of term. So I'm kind of delirious in the aspect of why are programs like that not on television saying to despick that and to do that, which they don't, but this is what the message goes across that they do in court, actual court. And then when they're sentenced, locked up, they really don't know what happened. That's true. So I'm kind of conflicted because we were taught to fear. Well, there were other elements too, but why would you want to go to court? It's not a comfortable place because, first of all, they're reading in a rhetoric that you don't understand because they're reading it from a book. Ordinances, laws, and things of that magnitude that you really don't understand in the common, common language. And most of the time, you fall asleep or it goes over your head because there's nothing that you really comprehend and understand. Going from that, let's stop talking about that and speak of what is being taught in the prisons far as are they getting trades with masonry, barbershop, electrical, plumbing? And I'm not speaking of all of the prisons, but there are certain prisons that used to give out these trades. Are they doing that anymore? Well, some are. Some are. Uh, there's an emphasis now on providing those incarcerated persons, and that's the new term, not inmates, but incarcerated persons. There are some uh, systems, correctional systems, that really focus on providing opportunities and training and making that available so that when persons can learn carpentry, they can learn the electrical, they can learn masonry, so that it gives them a skill that allows them to go back into the community and get a sustainable wage, not, a, and not disrespecting anybody that works for low wage, but they're trying to give you a skill that you can take with you once you leave rather than just let you go with no skills. The educational component is fine if you can't read then there's programs available that will teach you the basic aspects of reading, make you literate, it try to explain to you 
that just because you are incarcerated doesn't mean that's the end and you don't become a better criminal. Okay. You can get these skills and then they're providing avenues for people to go back into certain cities and work for rehabilitating houses, um, fixing up computers. They're trying to make people eligible to go back into these communities where they came with no skill other than how to sell drugs. And now you have a skill that the moment you leave prison with these outreach programs can direct you to these programs where you can make a living wage. You don't have to be on the corner. Right. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's take it from that there and say this cannabis thing. First of all, you're a convicted felon. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. Now, you know the business, but you did it the wrong way. Right. Now you come back out, and they're selling it legal, and you was on the corner, and he's still on the corner. Now, my question is, is here, it's not so much their actions, it's their way of thinking. Repent. Mm -hmm. To repent is to change your mind setting. Right. Now, how much support are they getting in the aspect of that inside the system, not only from the establishment, but from the officers? Because some of this is with the officers, too. That is true. And think of the programs such as Thinking for a Change, Cage and Rage. They're trying to provide avenues that people can say, evaluate what you were thinking about. Evaluate what you're thinking about now and in the future. One of the problems has been that, as you said, a lot of our younger inmate population has never had anyone who really schooled them. They were not going to school. They were the ones who were playing hooky, staying out, so then when you get caught up in the system and you get incarcerated, you come in with very little skills that you can take because you're not doing a life bid. Mm. You're, you're doing a short bid, three, five, five, seven, whatever, and if with good behavior, you can only have to do a third of that. But if you come in with the wrong mindset, and that's why they have these programs available trying to look at the intellectual aspect of incarceration where we're going to try to let you know that your thought processes is wrong because you're criminally minded when you don't have to. There's a you lot don't have of, anything else. That's all you know. Right. But if you are an intelligent person with this cage and rage and thinking for a change and some of these other programs, we've got like several others, that can actually try to get you to look at your situation and get out of that situation by changing the mentality that you have always had. But it's hard because ver some people have never even been to church. Hmm. They have no religious concept. We think of Jesus and Lord or Allah, or whoever, have something. They have they, nothing. They, they have existed in a place where they never had a curfew. They never had to come in. They had no control. Nobody was controlling them. They were looking around for... No structure. No structure. So without the PAL, the boys club, the after-school programs that every school in the city of Newark had, you had CYO, you hmm. had PAL, you had boys AAU. Club, yeah, yeah. So if you wanted the box you could find a place to box. You wanted to play sport. If you just wanted to come and get some food or sit down, True. there were elders who would come in and school you and say, this is not the path to take. Now, once they did away with the recreational program in the city, and the city had a recreational program in all areas. So you had so many opportunities to get involved with positive, Acti and it wasn't just sports. It was mm -hmm. a place where people were there, home economics. Yes. It was a broad.